Yeah, headphones, check. Microphone, check. Plug, check. Last one, camera, check. We're ready. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Tour. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every single morning at 8am UK time with all of the right equipment already all the time. Maybe. Thank you so much as always for joining me. Very much appreciated. I hope you've had a fantastic week. Welcome to Friday, first day of the weekend, of course, as always, because work doesn't really count on a Friday. It just doesn't. Just doesn't count. Um, so very happy with you all to be joining me here this morning to have a chat about what is becoming an increasingly more nervy run up to this Sunday. Uh, we're going to get more information about the game at the weekend today, and we'll talk about that very shortly. And we've got some other news to discuss as well. Before we jump into that, please make sure if you haven't done so already to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss a show. Good morning to A1, to Peter, to Kaiser, Carlton, uh, Roger, Steve, Temi, Carlton, and Ara Silky, uh, Glenn, uh, Damien, Olawale, Franklin, Jackie, Louis, Rich, uh, Stevie Gage, Machiavelli, Robert, Mr. Ree, Paul, Babatundi, Carl, Josh, Input, Maximir, Stephen, and plenty more of you guys and girls joining us in the chat box as well. Thank you so much, as always, for making this a part of your morning routines. It is hugely appreciated and very much a humbling experience, as it always is. With it being Friday, sometimes this can be a little bit of a chill day, so I understand that. So we really will need your help in reaching that 1,000 like every single day target. So do please drop a little press on that thumbs up button. Um, let's jump into today's stories, shall we? Uh, now, this doesn't directly relate to Arsenal, but I think it's something of an indirect, if you like, uh, kind of news story, um, because Xabi Alonso, who has been linked quite heavily to one of Arsenal's title rivals, Liverpool, of course, with the job to take over from Jurgen Klopp. Well, the latest suggestions are that he is set to stay at Bayer Leverkusen for another season, taking Leverkusen, we imagine, unless there is a quite a cataclysmic end to their season, back into the Champions League and uh, will be staying there for one more year before they're making a decision when I think his contract comes to an end in 2025. Now, it's worth remembering, of course, that that is the point in time where Pep Guardiola's contract is up at uh, uh, Manchester City. It could be a time where Real Madrid decide to part ways with Carlo Ancelotti. Jurgen Klopp, however, will be replaced. There is said to be no indication that uh, that Liverpool will wait for Alonso um, and they will appoint an option during the next season. And Amor Im, who is the sporting coach, appears to be the number one option. Could that have an impact on some sporting targets that Arsenal might want to sign? Well, according to Portuguese media, Arsenal are indeed interested in signing both of uh, Usmana Diamande and Victor Goyocares, which takes a potential deal into the 180 million euro bracket. That is the combined uh, amounts of both of their release clauses, which is about 140 to 150 um, million pounds. And for that reason, uh, it would be an incredible amount of investment for Arsenal to make into just two players. But when you get to the stage where Arsenal are at, where they're competing for titles um, and Diamante, why have I spelled that wrong? <laughs> Diamante, sorry. Uh, when it comes to kind of the positions which Arsenal are in, um, in being a title rival of, of the biggest teams in the world, you don't tend to see huge amounts of players come in. Um, it will depend very much on the, you know, the turnover, I think, in the summer of how many people move on and how many people are um, sold and leave the club in the summer as to how many, obviously, we end up bringing in. But you don't tend to see loads of signings being made uh, by teams at the top. But that could be different for us. And this could be the final part of this not restructure, but the, the squad building journey that we've been on since Mikel Arteta was appointed in 2019. We might indeed uh, find ourselves at the end of that process this summer with the squad being in the best potential position 
um, that we've ever been in. Um, so it's worth looking at that. Now, the big news of yesterday, I think at least, was the massive uh, signing of Ethan Nuaneri. Now, Ethan Nuaneri signed his brand new contract with Arsenal. The 17-year-old recently turned 17, of course, had to wait until uh, he, he turned that specific age to sign that uh, first pro contract. To my understanding, this is a record deal for the club. No player has signed a pro contract as lucrative as what Arsenal have agreed with Ethan Nuaneri with the faith they see in the youngster beyond many. Um, Pet Metazaka said that we are extremely proud of Ethan and his journey from pre-academy to Hale End, then a seamless transition to the Sober Realty Training Centre, and then making his first team debut. Ethan's journey now continues, and we'll all be there alongside him to support his development. Ethan has a strong ability to master the ball, dominate possession, and is really effective in the final third, which fits into our playing style at Arsenal. He is someone that will thrive on and off the pitch as a strong young gunner, and we look forward to working with him during his ongoing development in the years to come. Not only that, but we actually heard from Nuaneri specifically. This has never seemingly been something that was ever in doubt, I don't think. There was always a lot of question marks about Nuaneri's future, about what he might do, where he might go, with lots of other teams, including Liverpool and Manchester City, very interested in him. But he says, I'm delighted to have finally got to this stage after all the hard work over so many years. It's a proud moment for me and my family to finally be here, so I'm happy and ready to keep working. It was the dream to get to this stage. I've always thought about when this day would come and I've been looking forward to it. So happy it's finally here. I didn't have to think about it. This is my family and it feels like home here. Everyone's like a family together and they care about everyone. It feels so special to be here. All the people around me have helped me get better as a person and definitely helped me develop as a player on the pitch. The opportunities from Mikel, all the under-21 coaches and under-18 coaches, they've all helped me develop. So I'm grateful to them. And it's really, really good um, to see kind of such positivity uh, from a player that was linked, as I say, to a number of our rivals. But it seems his headspace was always very committed to Arsenal. And it seemed as though that he would indeed commit for the future. And now next season is going to be very exciting to see what happens with him. Will he get more minutes? Will he play in the first team more? Will he come off the bench more? Will we give him more time? Will he break into the first team and play on a regular occasion? Does it change Arsenal's transfer commitments in certain attacking midfield roles? Will it affect the futures of Smith Rowe or Fabio Vieira? I think there's so many questions with Ethan Nuaneri's future and how it affects the Arsenal first team squad. And I personally can't wait to see where it goes. Now, Mikel Arteta will face the press today, this afternoon, early afternoon, just after one o'clock UK time, as we will hopefully get some answers on some key players ahead of this weekend's massive game against Manchester City. Gabriel Martinelli, Bukayo Saka and Gabriel Magalhaes, of course, are all players that we want to know more about. And I personally would like to get an update on Jurian Timber, who has not necessarily been spotted in any of the recent training images that have been released by the club, raising a couple of questions as to if or not he's had something of a setback. I certainly hope that's not the case and that it's just been missed um, amongst the... Uh, amongst the images that have been seen. Uh, in terms of Arsenal's under-21 fixtures so far, because, of course, their last game against Blackburn was um, was postponed because of a pitch problem, which was a little bit of a, fr of a frustration. I think we might have seen um, some changes. We don't actually have a game uh, until the 8th of March, um, I think now. Or, yes, uh, sorry, the 8th of April. They had a little break after the 8th of March, and with that game postponed, there's no game this weekend, which doesn't give any opportunity, of course, for Arsenal to kind of bed in Timber to a, a youth game whatsoever. Um, and so if there is an opportunity in Timber, he's starting to feel his, build his way back. It seems that that might, next opportunity might come against Luton. I guess we'll have to see. Um, but we'll have to wait and see if he is indeed available and hasn't had that setback that there are fears that he may have done because he's not been spotted in any of the recent training work. Again, that's just complete conjecture and theory at the moment, so I wouldn't read too much into it. But We'll hear from Arteta on hopefully those three players and potentially Yuri and Timber as well. As well as his thoughts ahead of the weekend on Man City. It's his first opportunity also to answer any questions about Ben White after the, all of the England controversy that's gone on uh, in recent weeks. So lots to discuss, lots to hear from him. And you'll be able to hear from the Mikel uh, Arteta. You can read the transcript as always on the Football.London website, of course, and stream it on the Arsenal 
website. Um, but yeah, really excited to get some words from the Arsenal manager, as I'm equally excited to tell you about the abilities that NordVPN gives you to stay safe and secure online. Just like Ethan Ranieri signing up to a new deal, I can give you a new deal, but for a significantly reduced price if it is a one or a two year plan. And not only that, but you can get some extra months thrown in three, uh, three months in particular for a one year deal, four months for a two-year deal and you can get that discount by going to nordvpn.com slash guna to get yourself that significant discount nordvpn is a absolutely essential tool if you are surfing the net it gives you the ability to change your geolocation digitally on your laptop your phone or your tablet and not only that but it keeps those pesky little trackers away from seeing what you're doing so you can stay safe and secure whilst you're surfing the net as well so please employ you go to the link down in the description Get that deal. And thank you once again, as always, for NordVPN for supporting the channel. And, of course, the prize, which I don't know why this has not changed. I've done this a number of times, but it keeps sw switching back without me even checking. But there is a Dennis Bergkamp signed shirt and framed uh, shirt, which you can mount up on your wall. And uh, there is a bank holiday discount price, actually, according to the website, of just £2.36. And, uh, of course, for those that are celebrating Easter. Uh, we send you all the well wishes in the world and I hope you're having a fantastic weekend and bank holiday, of course, as well. But uh, yes, there is the opportunity to win this prize, which, as I say, is not the William Saliba shirt, but is a Dennis Bergkamp signed shirt. So best of luck to all of those that are getting involved in the latest competition. Uh, wishing you all the best of luck with that. Right, we are going to, if my laptop starts to allow me for some reason, because it's going really strange at the moment. I'm like, I can't even see the mouse. Very weird. See, the, I'm, who owns this? Who owns a NordVPN? Exactly. I'm, I'm throwing out questions I don't even mean to. I can't press anything on the screen at the moment. So we're going to hopefully sort this out for part two. Uh, but thank you for those that are tuning in for part one. Part two is our part of the show where we tackle your questions and more right after this. There we go. We've I've, I've got the mouse back. I can actually see what I'm doing on the screen now, which is a, a positive sign. Anyway, good morning to those, uh, of course, around the world. Good afternoon, good evening, if you happen to be anywhere else. Just remember, of course, this weekend is daylight savings. So on Sunday, uh, the clocks are going forward here an hour, which means, of course, the show will be taking place uh, at a different time for those of you who are not experiencing daylight savings. Just want to point that out so i think our eight o'clock when it becomes eight o'clock here will actually be an hour earlier for those around the world uh, if you're not going through daylight savings so anytime that you've been listening to this show and you're not going through daylight savings this show on sunday will be an hour earlier from now on because of that fact so make sure you watch out for that uh, gage says do you think this summer may have a focus on trying to pry youth talent away from major clubs especially after seeing arteta watching real madrid's youth last week and the answer to your question is yes there is certainly an intention from arsenal to go out into the market out into different academies and see if they can pounce on some plenty of young talent that they might be able to bring into the club we've already seen a couple of arsenal signings actually be made um we brought in uh, Braden Clark, of course. And there's another player, I think, that Arsenal have actually recently signed. But I don't know if I've mentioned before on the show, um, but there was said to be a youngster that Arsenal did bring in. Let me see if I can find it. Um, you think it would be somewhere. Um, I thought I saw it somewhere else, but I'm pretty sure there was a player that Arsenal were looking to try and do. Uh, I'll try and find the information on that shortly. But uh, there is, yes, it's a, it's a, I'm sure it's Amberley, you're right. It's a Northern Irish lad um, that Arsenal were trying to sign. Um, but uh, I can't remember what the player's name was, rather frustratingly. But uh, I'll see if I can find it. Uh, John says, why do you have so much faith in Jokerez? What do you see? John, I mean, the 36 goals, the 14 assists, the fact that he's leading the way for goal contributions in the top 10 leagues of Europe. Uh, his, his technical ability is, in my opinion, from what I've seen, I think is good. Uh, I think the person is, is very clinical, confidence, good age. And of all the strikers around at the moment that you could go and get, there's not necessarily a standout one for me. Uh, and so if you can go and get the most informed player in the world that has plenty of gears still to go after already taking a step up from the championship, I think that it shows you a lot of positivity. Um, I think it shows you a lot of, of, of positivity as well. So um, there's lots of reasons, but uh, there are some quick ones for you. 
Um, Sebastian says, Swedish Gunnar here. I think Jokeres' profile suits us really well, but Jesus is way better as a football player overall. I've talked about this before. I think that as a footballer, Jesus is a more rounded number nine. But as like the number nine characteristics that you look for as a finisher, as you know, a lethal scorer of goals, uh, Jokeres is, is certainly ahead, I would go for. Um, I'm going to butcher the name. Um, is it Kader? Kada O'Neill. I, I know that Irish names are spelt very, very challengingly. It's like Aoife, which is a fantastic name, um, or Shauna. Uh, but it's, I, I, do, do give me the phonetic spelling uh, of O'Neill, who is the youngster, the Northern Irish kid that we've apparently signed. Um, but uh, do tell me how I'm meant to pronounce that, because I'm sure I'm getting that wrong. Um, and I'm sure there's a way that I am. Yes, here we go. So Arsenal... Um, Arsenal looks set to complete the unexpected signing of Irish teenager O'Neill, uh, who appears to be close to joining the club. 15-year-old recently made his, uh, his debut in professional football, coming on as a substitute for Irish side Linfield in the top flight of uh, the Ballymena on Saturday. Um, but yeah, I'd be very intrigued. If there's any uh, Irish or Northern Irish listeners that can give me the pronunciation, uh, I would love to hear it um, in phonetic form. Please do. Uh, Mark says, what have you heard about Martinelli's injury situation? And what about Stones and Walker? Uh, Stones and Walker apparently have had scans in the last couple of days. They are still massive doubts for the game this weekend. In regards to Martinelli, uh, we'll have to hear from Mikel Arteta a little bit later on this afternoon. There is something about, if you hear about the latest injuries, that there's something about wanting to keep them under wraps a little bit, if you know that makes sense. Because... I know that you get your ITKs here, there, and everywhere on socials and stuff like that are constantly trying to just, you know, spew out injury information. But there is also something about Arsenal wanting to keep things under wraps, and quite rightly, we don't. We want to keep Man City guessing. We want to keep them up. You know, we want to make it as impossible as possible to make it impossible to to, to guess what Arsenal team we might see. So. Yeah, I, even if I got more information about Martinelli or Saka or Gabriel, I would be inclined to be a little bit vague as to their availability because we want to keep Man City guessing as much as feasibly possible. Uh, Gage says, do you think that there is a world where we switch our focus from a nine to the wide positions and finding competition for the wing, the likes of Nico Williams and dream players like Xavi Simmons? I think the priority remains the centre-forward position. Certainly that's been reported by not just myself, but we saw David Ornstein talk about it yesterday. Uh, and the centre-forward remains very much a, a key area. Um, for us. The wide positions is certainly an area that Arsenal are interested in, as is midfield, as is defence, as is potentially goalkeeper if Ramsdale moves on. So there's lots of areas Arsenal could yet sign players in, but the centre forward is, from my understanding, the key point of focus for the summer. Uh, Jack says, Tom, what's your favourite breakfast when you're not rushing? When I'm not rushing? I'll tell you what, I'm a bit of a Scandi breakfast guy. I do like, you know, nice bit of very nice sourdough bread, smashed avocado, poached egg, um, and uh, smoked salmon. Yeah, so what, eggs, eggs royale, I guess, but with some avocado. Ah, oh, yeah, beautiful. Um, I do love going to a little Scandi restaurant in uh, in London. There's a few of them around where you can get some very nice breakfast. When I was in Denmark earlier last year, uh, again, had a very nice Scandi breakfast over there, uh, a very similar ilk. Because they get all like the seeds and the salad and the side and, you know, it's, it's great. Love it. I love a, a very healthy breakfast like that. I do love a full English, John. Don't get me wrong. I do. I do love a full English. But there's just something really like about like an Eggs Royale that I just really like. Sets me up perfectly for the morning. Um, Zordon says, uh, will Arsenal sign a six if we can't sell Partey and Jorginho is retained or are we going to let Georgie go? Impossible to know right now, Zordon. Anything can happen between now and, of course, the summer transfer window. But... Um, there is a world in which any two of those could go. And of course, we could bring some players in. Uh, Damien says, according to Google, it's pronounced Kader. I was right. There you go. Or Car I mean, Carlton's going Carder. I think Kader. I thought it would be Kader from the way I read it. So it was. I was a stab in the dark, but I'll tell you what, I think it's pretty good in the end. Kader O'Neill is the 15-year-old uh, that Arsenal uh, are set to supposedly sign. Um, Mark says, is your is it your sense that our interest in Zubamendi for the midfield is calling? And if so, who do you think that we might go for in Partey if Partey has moved on? And do you think we'll sell Partey? Again, impossible to know in the end if we will, but there is certainly an openness from Arsenal to move Partey on if indeed they get a reasonable 
bid for him in the summer, and it is reliant upon that, of course. Um, I think that the Zubamendi side of things, there is still interest from Zubamendi. There is still very much a keenness from Arsenal um, to to look at him as a key figure and as a potential signing, but he's not the only one. There are other options Arsenal are looking at. And Arsenal are keeping their options fairly open at this point. You know, they are in discussions. Things are going on in the background. Talks are being had unofficially, as they always do in football. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's no kind of front runners. There's no Declan Rice this summer like there was last summer. There's, you know, there's the ability to be malleable. Uh, I don't think I pushed the likes in the second half of the show yet. So please make sure, if you haven't done so already, to drop a like on the video. Help support this community, which is made up of some fantastic people, just like Stephen, who has been very supportive of TGT over the last year. He's been a member now for nearly a year, 11 months. We're closing in on that year anniversary, Stephen. Thank you for your very kind support of the channel. Uh, Stephen says, Hola, Tom. Uh, do you think Arteta is doing a better job with substitutions in 2024? And do you have any concerns about substitutions early enough against City? See you in LA. Yeah, I wish I could see you in LA, Stephen, but I don't, sadly, don't think that's going to be happening. Um, but Stephen, what I would look to, from my perspective at least, with the substitutions is, I think there, were, there are still some areas that are taken improve, and I think substitutions in game management is still an area where he is developing and improving as a coach. Um, I'm not 100% sure that. It's it's far, it's like refined yet in the perfect way. Like the Porto game, I think he could have been a bit more proactive. He seemed quite cautious in that Porto game. Maybe there was a reason and we won that game. So you could argue that he got it right in the end. But I still think there is improvements to be made in his substitutions. Um, it's mainly rotation, that the biggest area I think that Arteta needs to improve in. And as we've got this six-week period now of playing two games every three or four days, he is going to have to learn to be able to rotate effectively and not allow the, the, the kind of the quality level to drop significantly. So there's certainly some scope for Arsenal to rotate in the next few weeks. And he is going to be under the microscope in regards to that in-game management. Uh, AJ says, when do you think Arteta is going to start getting the young gunners involved? I mean, to be fair, AJ, he already has. He's given seven debuts to Hale Enders already during his career at the club so far. We've seen Ethan Nuneri get an opportunity this season to come off the bench. And we know also that this season there is a lot of pressure and not too many cup games because sadly we keep getting drawn against the likes of Man City and Liverpool. We want to see more young gunners involved. He has missed opportunities. The Lawns home game, the Wolves game at the end of last season, definitely opportunities he missed to give young players chances. But also I think there is something to be said that we've not necessarily had the talent available to risk yet. And I think that's why we're starting to see um, Arsenal move in the market for some of these younger guys like Braden Clark, like uh, like Cader O'Neill. So all of these players, I think we're going to start to see given more opportunities. But you've got to find the right balance. Charles Sago Jr., as Temi points out, you know, started a game this season in the League Cup against Brentford, another opportunity given to a young player. So we are giving opportunities. We could give more, but there is certainly scope, I think, for Arteta to argue, well, with the pressure on, can we afford to risk those young players when we've got other minutes that to be given to some senior stars in the team as well? Uh, Earl says, morning, Tom. Uh, it's Earl who was on the phone in the other day talking about Lauren James. Uh, it's good to see you again, Earl. I think we'll win 2-0. I just have a feeling. Come on, you gooners. I hope you're right, Earl. I really, really hope that you're right. Um, tomorrow, of course, I think... Tomorrow, I think we'll be doing our preview show. I don't think I'm going to be able to squeeze in today. If you do want some words on the channel about the Man City game, I was joined by uh, Umar and Laura last uh, in the last few days. So please go back and watch that Man City special on the Let's Talk Arsenal playlist and uh, you'll find it there. But uh, I think if we do a preview for this game, I'm going to have to try and squeeze it in tomorrow somewhere because uh, I'm out today. I had a bit of a date day in London um, with the missus. So uh, it's needed. I'll tell you what, it's been a last... The last few weeks has been... Some real tough weeks, but uh, it's it's needed. I need a day off just to chill, relax, and and rest the brain. Uh, I think that came to a head, actually, in yesterday's show. For those that watched my meltdown of a presenting disaster yesterday, I think, yeah, a break was needed, and uh, that, that is going to happen today. So <laughs> I look forward to joining you tomorrow, and hopefully we'll have a preview show for you tomorrow. Uh, Anna Simos says, Tom, the fact that we are persisting with Diamande for so much money at a young age makes me think that there may be a bigger plan for him. His stature in competitions looks eerily similar to Partey. What are your thoughts? 
I mean, they could be. They could see him playing as a midfielder. They could see him playing as a, as a right back or somewhere else. It's interesting. He has certainly got the technical ability, I think, to step into midfield. Um, but they do want depth in the defensive area. We need. I had a few discussions with people about when I said that seven defenders is not enough. And it's by the way, it's not. Categorically, seven defenders is not enough. And that's why City have eight. And it's why Liverpool have nine. Uh, we do need one more defender. And I think adding one more defender to the group, there's been a huge portion of this season, especially with the players that we've got. I think it's really naive to think that, and I mean that with respect, but we, I think it's naive to think that seven defenders is enough when you've got Tommy Asu, who has, you know, persistent injury issues. You've got Timber, who's coming back from a significant knee injury. You've got Zinchenko, who continually suffers with injuries himself. Saliba obviously has had a period out being injured. We know that Gabriel is carrying a foot injury. We know that Ben White carries a knee injury. And Kivior, of course, is playing out of position at the moment. I think that we need to make sure that we add that eighth defender to the squad because Cedric being there is not good enough. He's going to leave in the summer. We know that. Eight is definitely the magic number of defenders, especially when you have the question marks that we do on a number of the players that we currently have. Um, Mark says, with Saliba and Gabriel healthy and with Kivio, Tomiasu and Ben White, all experienced players at centre-half, isn't the emphasis on a high dollar signing for Diamande less important than the number six? I don't think it's about like ratings of importance for midfield and defence. I think they're equally as important in, in some regards. I do look at the midfield if you can sign a dream player as the priority. I'm just not sure that dream player necessarily exists, which what which is what raises more questions for me about the midfield position. Uh, Ronald says, do you think that Waters could leave this summer? Potentially. Raw Waters could leave if he feels the pathway is not there, especially if we sign another defender. Raw Waters could definitely leave the club, just like Lino Sosa, of course, left the club in January. Uh, Jackie says, Tom, are we reliant? Are we too reliant on Odegaard? Who is his natural uh, rotation option? Is it Vieira? Vieira is the option. You've got Smith Rowe, of course, as well. And then coming through the ranks now is Nuaneri also too. But yeah, I mean, it's difficult not to be over-reliant on a player of, of the world-class ability of Odegaard. You know, it's like, you know, Man City have De Bruyne. And I know they've got Bernardo Silva, etc. as well, who can also play an attacking midfield role, but mainly plays, you know, when he does into, into those kind of wide positions, he skews over to those wide positions. If you lose De Bruyne, it's very hard to replace that. Liverpool, you know, if you lose Mohamed Salah, it's very difficult to replace Mohamed Salah. And a talismanic figure like Odegaard is always going to be very, very difficult to replace. So that's worth pointing out. Uh, Reese says, are we still interested in Hato? Yes, we are. It's just trickier of a deal to do now we sign that new contract with Ajax. Uh, John says, uh, is Goyokerez and the number six signing a good summer window or do we need more? I think we need more because I think more will leave. Uh, Matt G, thank you so much for the kind donation who says, appreciate the quality daily shows for that. Thank you, Matt, for your very dedicated listenership. It is hugely appreciated as always. Matt G has been one of our longest and most dedicated listeners. Not like longest in terms of like how tall he is. He's a tall guy, to be fair. I've met him. But uh, in terms of our longest serving listeners in the channel, uh, he's been absolutely fantastic. Amira says, if all our defenders were fit this weekend, who starts, who makes the bench and who gets left at home? I think Cedric obviously is the obvious one to point out. Um, and then I think it's down to like, it's down to the game, I think. If we're going up against a top team, you could argue Zinchenko could get left at home or Kivior, depending on form. You know, because against top teams, I think you want Tommy Asu as an option to bring off the bench. If you're going up against teams maybe lower down the table where you know you're going to dominate the ball more, you want Zinchenko in the squad so you can use him as a potential option in the side. So it depends, I think, upon who the opponent is rather than just being your standard weekend fixture. Um, let's go to Arsenal Avengers says, Gunnosaurus needs feeding, Tom. Uh, <laughs> Ronald says, would Grealish leave and would, he, would you sign him? I'm not sure. I don't think he's worth the money that we'd have to pay for him. And I don't think he suits the style of, of winger that we want. We want pace. We want a classic traditional winger. You know, someone like Martinelli, I think, to add to the team. That's what we want. And I'm not sure Grealish fits that. Uh, Louis, thank you, says, I appreciate your shows more than Matt <laughs> with a donation as well. You don't need to fight. It's all good. I appreciate every single one of you and all the support that you bring to the channel. The community is, is amazing. Uh, it's the best on the platform. It's just not debatable. It's just, it's just no debate to me. We have the best community here and you guys are fantastic. Just, oh my goodness me. James, thank you so much for the very, very kind donation. It says, enjoy that day out. Treat the missus, my friend. Take your mind off the upcoming running. James, that's incredibly generous of you. Thank you so much for the kind support. Again, James, one of our most dedicated listeners, another listener 
Um, they've had the pleasure, I believe, of meeting, you know. So uh, I'm saying I'm saying that because I think I recognize the, the dog in the picture. Yeah. So, James, thank you so much. Um, that is incredibly generous of you. And uh, again, just highlighting the amazing community that we've got here. As I've said before, um, the money that people do donate to the channel, we reinvest straight back into it. That's why the camera is improved. We've improved that dramatically. As I say, the the lighting you can see behind me, of course, the microphones, the the, the, the technology, everything that you put into the channel, we reinvest to try and make it as good as it is. If you watch shows that we did on the channel like two, three years ago, compare that to now. I still do have a green screen behind me, but we stopped using the green screen. I just felt it was a bit too distracting behind me. But if I ever want to do any content with a green screen, we've now got one, um, you know, so... It's brilliant. So thank you so much. Um, Matt G says, I thought we had the best community until Louis dissed me. See, this is, you're going to start in fighting. You don't have to fight. It's all love and peace here. So we appreciate it. Um, the the Padacan says, Tom, 17 pence being sent your way through the post. Thanks, mate. I'll look out for those 17 1P coins in the post. And John says, your head still as big as, as big as it ever has been. We love that massive head. Thank you, John. That's very, very kind of you. <laughs> I do remember the person who left the comment saying, Tom, that hat's way too small for you, mate. You need to need to get some bigger hats. Uh, and by the way, I've had a lot of people reach out about merchandise. I haven't had a chance to respond to all of them yet. Um, but we are kind of looking... I've had a few people uh, reach out who are more in the T-shirt world. We're kind of looking at people to, to help us with the hat side of things. So, um, yeah, if you could, that would be hugely appreciated. Um, NSW as well. Thank you so much as well for the kind donation. For thousand ngn what is what's the currency of ngn does anyone know currency ngn this is my ignorance coming through here it is uh nigerian nera there you go so thank you so much nsw for the very kind donation really appreciate that um and uh, it's very very much appreciated so thank you uh thank you so much nsw again big part of our discord big part of the chat box big part of this community Thank you. Um, Nikki, uh, Mickey, sorry, says, uh, Mickey NJX, Arteta has always taken Guardiola's system, tweaked it, and made it better. I think we'll see a new striker with presence and a sweeper defender, hence the Amande. Expect a better system than City play now. Big words, Mickey. You're suggesting that Arteta might be able to take this thing well beyond, um, you know, well beyond uh, what, Arteta, what Pep's doing with City, which is a very big claim. Indeed. Uh, Tizer says 1,000 likes and 1,000 pounds in donations a day is the new challenge. I'm not that greedy. I, I don't think I could. I, I, you know, others might be able to, to, to push that, but there's no way. No way I'd ever force that on anyone. But 1,000 likes. It's a, free, it's a free help to the channel. So please do drop a like on the video. Very much appreciate your time as always. It's pronounced Naira. Thank you, Joe. Always appreciate that. Um, always appreciate it. I had someone leave a really... Not a particularly nice comment about my pronunciations. I feel like I try my best. And I always hold my hands up if I get a pronunciation wrong. And you correct me because I need to learn. Like we've, we've had a couple today. Naira, thank you for that, Joe. And of course, um, uh, Kader, who was the uh, the youngster that Arsenal have signed. So please do politely correct me on my pronunciations. I, I, I take it with a pinch of salt, always. Uh, Derek says, hey, mate, which manager changes it up this weekend? Pep done it last year and surprised us. Do you think Arteta might do it this year? I'm, I mean, more inclined to think Pep. Arteta is, tends to stick to his guns, tends to stick to his favourites when it comes to teams for big games. Uh, he has surprised us sometimes, but I think I'm more inclined to think it'll be Pep, if anybody, who who switches it up. Um, Reese says, Tom, if Ramsdale gets sold, who are you wanting? Um Again, a very difficult question. My knowledge of goalkeepers who could come in to be a second choice is not particularly strong. I'd go down the route of more of an experienced goalkeeper who's got distribution abilities, like a Stefan Ortega managed, you know, at City. Very hard to find that. Very hard indeed. Um, I think that what we will do uh, is is end the show there with it being over a, a thousand uh, uh, over the thirty minute mark. Sorry. So thank you so much. I got I got to jump out before people start emptying their bank bank accounts anymore. But thank you so much uh, for people that have very kindly sent in some donations today. It's incredibly humbling as always. Um, I'll be back potential probably not tonight as i say it's date day tomorrow morning certainly saturday evening another one for a preview ahead of the game against city Mikel Arteta's press conference is as i say this afternoon so we'll hear from him and get some more updates on the squad 
on his thoughts on Ben White, on the Man City game as well. We'll talk about and round that all up in tomorrow morning's show. Um, so thank you um, to everybody that continues to support us. Please do drop a like before you leave and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Stay safe, stay well, happy and respectful. And as always, up the Arsenal.